You have to wonder why one old ram will step out along a turf bank on the far side of Kalishal, his feet raw from a bad case of rot, while another stays hunched under his cape of sackcloth or untreated sheepskin. That memory is urgent as a scalp in my big toenail, or a nick in my own ear, drawing me back to a bog hole where black water swirled and our blaze-faced mare sank to her hocks. For even as I grasped a camouflage net hanging over the dressing station in Clare Fay Farm, I thought of the halt and lame who later today must be carried along a trench named Royal Avenue, who'll find themselves entrenched no less physically than politically. I think now of young Oro of the Royal Irish Rifles, barely out of step, though he digs with the wrong foot. I see him on Hodge's farm of a winter morning, the sun hinting like a tin of bullied beef from a high shelf in the officer's quarters. A servant boy tugging at the hay rick for an armful of fodder. At least we'll be spared the back breaking work of late August in a flax dam, the stink unfurled like a banner across the moor where great coated bodies ret. I think of Giselle, her flaxen hair in a net, who served me last week in a village cafe, teaching me the game of the goose, even as she plucked a gander's cape. At a table in Giselle's cafe, one orderly was painting a landscape in yellow ochre, raw sienna and raw umber, pausing once in a while to gnaw at a trench of thick-skinned camembert. Something about that estaminet where I had tried a soupçon of gin from an egg cup made of delf made me intolerably homesick. The music the orderly played on the Victrola was Offenbach's overture from Orpheus in the Underworld. It was as if a servant girl from Vermeer was pouring milk to steep the bread for Panedi. Giselle lighting my cigarette, as Hodge himself once set a flame to a paraffin lamp in the cowshed on that valuable farm of land in Kalisha. Later this morning, I'll shoulder my firearm and fall in as a raw recruit with the veterans who followed the Boers from the Cape of Good Hope to the Orange Free State like rats following the Pied Piper of Hamlin in search of gold and pelf. That officer from the rifles carried a blackthorn stick. The wound in his back brought to mind a puppy of all things. Something has curled up and died in the quagmire of the trench named Sandy Row down which the boys will surely step on the 12th of July. It's a shame it was only last week I met Giselle and fell into her amorous net. You have to wonder at the zeal with which some drive a bayonet through a straw-stuffed effigy of Lundy. It'll be no distance to Clare Fay Farm from Thietfal Wood. It'll be one step forward into no man's land between the Gibeline and Guelphs, with their little bags of tricks, ich, ich, one step forward, two steps back towards the Schwaben Redoubt. I noticed how O'Roa twirled his moustache as he sang Tom Moore's Let Erin Remember. Commanding officers in sheepskin capes are under orders not to leave the trench and go over the top. It's the duty of the rest of us to seek fame and fortune. The needle had stuck in a rut on the Victrola halfway through a foxtrot. The blaze-faced mare Hodge bought from a farmer in Ard Straw, the ram from a farmer in Tadavnet. It seems now everywhere I go there's a trench. 
that's precisely as tall and thin as my own good self, and through which, if I march double quick, I may yet find my way back to bounteous Kalisho, the bog from which I was hurled into this bog. There's a strong chance that Giselle, Mon Amour, will hold me hostage in my bed at Clairefay Farm and simply not allow me to escape. For the moment, I must concentrate on taking aim as I adjust my helmet and haversack and mount the firing step.